Okay, so let's talk about exterior pet peeves. And I figured, why not do it outside? And these are just my opinion, my perspective. I'm not gonna bash anyone personally, at least not out in the open, but. And also for today's video, we're happy to be partnered up with Benjamin Moore as today's sponsor, which is really, really convenient for an exterior video. They've released a brand new product called Element Guard. And much like the name suggests, it does a wonderful job at protecting from the harsh elements elements that aren't really present today, but they could be tomorrow. It's slated to do a wonderful job at protecting from rain, harsh sun, so that your paint will last, which is super important with exterior paint because you want it to last. Getting your exterior done, it's a big project. So you wanna make sure you're going with something that's going to stand the test of time. Big thanks to Benjamin Moore for sponsoring the video. And it's great to see more of these products coming out that are even more accessible as well. Okay, so pet peeve number one, it's gotta be when my neighbor is recording YouTube videos in their backyard. I'm just kidding, my neighbors are cool, they don't mind. But number one is tied to that. It's having no peripheral vision, having tunnel vision when it comes to designing your home. And what I mean about that is you're not really taking in the neighborhood you're not taking them into consideration, not necessarily because you think that your neighbor is gonna hate the way you design your home. I do feel it's nice when a home fits the neighborhood, fits the vibe, the overall aesthetic. That can go a number of different ways. It could be the color scheme you go with, but more specifically on those higher end, bigger budget projects, you're using similar materials, especially if there are newer houses, or you're just leaning into some of the architectural components that are already there. One of my contractors described a new, new house, like a brand new house, as a robot house. Like it looks like it's made of super uber modern components that don't necessarily fit your traditional brick, your siding. Like you just see orange, weird, unnatural wood everywhere now. And it's just a lot. So unless you expect your neighborhood to kind of follow your pattern and your trend, you're probably just gonna stand out like a sore thumb. And I don't necessarily think that's what you wanna go for. It's not what I would wanna go for. You still wanna go with your gut on a lot of these things, but at least be aware and mindful and considerate of everything else that's happening. Pet peeve number two is accent garage doors. And believe me, this happens. Your front door, that can be fun, right? You can pick fun colors, you know, your mustard yellows, your turquoise colors, your classic red front door. There's really a lot you can do there. A garage door isn't necessarily the feature of the exterior. It's not something that you show off to your friends. Look at my beautiful garage door. Why paint them with a fun color to draw the eye if you're not intending to do that in the first place. Don't think that your garage door needs to match your front door color. Keep them separate and you'll be good. Pet peeve number three, if you're painting your house like what my shirt looks like right now, not gonna like it. Me, I won't because bright, bright whites, while they are clean and bright and obviously vibrant, they become that much more all of those things when used outside, which is oftentimes why I recommend people go with off whites on their exterior. Even if they want a white looking house, don't go for the brightest white possible. Maybe dial it back a bit, get something a bit more toned down and appropriate for the outside. This on an entire house, too much. Tying into bright whites are just bright, vibrant colors in general. We're not all lucky enough to be on the east coast of Canada or somewhere in Europe, right by the sea. Where you can have all these fun colors because everyone's doing it. I've seen a lot of people paint their home a bright turquoise or mustard yellow and then live to regret it. They thought that they needed to go with the brightest, most saturated colors to get that effect that they were looking for. Chances are you don't need to go as bright and vibrant as you might think. Maybe instead of crazy, crazy bright yellow, you just go for a yellowy cream color. You still get that effect, but it's gonna be a little more mellowed out on your home which is a massive canvas to look at every single day. Go with your gut at first, and then maybe get other colors that are a little softer within that same sort of color family and see which one you like. Now this next one is kind of based on one of my neighbors. It is neglecting what's already there, neglecting your main body color, your roof color especially, when you're doing other exterior projects. Things like stairways is a big one interlock it. Whatever new stone or brick 
you're incorporating into this space, it needs to fit with what's already there. They need to work together. Otherwise, it'll just look like two separate things trying to coexist, but not. Down the road, there is a house that has warmer colorations throughout, but then the stone they chose for their interlocking is very cold, very blue leaning, gray, slate color, and it just doesn't fit together. And it's a shame because a lot of people won't really consider the color temperature of brick, but they have to. When those two canvases are clashing, it's very, very noticeable. Think of the entire picture once everything's all said and done. Make sure everything's working together nicely. And of course, another pet peeve of mine is those welcome planks. I'm just kidding. I recently bashed them in this video right over here, but to be honest, I got one and I really like it. <laughs> I guess I gotta eat my words there.